Members, Mr. Cal Boylan has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Infrastructure. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically for a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister for Infrastructure why she announced the decision to approve planning for the North South Electricity Interconnector on social media rather than in the Assembly. And I call the Minister for Infrastructure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the member may not be aware that planning decisions have never been announced in the Assembly in the past. The long established procedure is that once the Minister has fully considered the application and taken a decision, it is normal practice for a letter indicating the outcome of that decision to issue to the Speaker of the Assembly, the Chair of the Committee, and all MLAs. That is a process which was followed, and my officials went over and beyond this to give early indications. At 12.10 and again at 12.15, my officials telephoned the business office to advise that a letter was coming for immediate issue to all MLAs. At 12.25, my official telephoned the Infrastructure Committee clerk to advise that a letter was coming. At 12.45, letters issued from my private office to the Speaker, to the Chair of the Committee and to the Business Office for all MLAs in this Assembly. At 13.22, I thereafter announced this positive news via social media. As this timeline sets out, the process was correctly followed. And I call Carol Boylan to ask a supplementary question. In Glamour, good day. Could I thank the Minister for coming to the House to, to give a response? But the Minister is well aware that this is a major infrastructure project. There have been major concerns relayed by numerous members of the community in, in terms of house values, in terms of health issues, uh, thousands of objections. So could I ask the Minister, in relation to those concerns, um, how will the Minister reconcile those concerns with the decision she has made today, and what interventions or any options is she going to provide to address those major concerns? Because in Newry Armagh, there's a number of groups that are very, very concerned about the introduction of a 400 kV pylon uh, electricity, 400 kV electricity wire pylon that hasn't happened here in this part of the country before. Carmine Margaret. I thank the member for his question. I acknowledge the concerns of residents and the local community. Interested third parties were given the opportunity to present evidence to the PAC and have all issues debated at the public inquiry. The PAC carefully considered and reported on the issues raised, but concluded that the various objections raised by third parties had not all been sustained. All issues were addressed in the PAC report. The Department has also independently considered those issues, as well as all new representations made since the applications were remitted back to the Department in light of the Buick judgment and considers that a grant of planning permission is the correct decision. I recognise the strength of feeling in the community and the concerns around this proposal. A development of this nature is such that it cannot be delivered without some impact. However, this has to be balanced against the imperative need for the development. I maintain my position that the need for the development outweighs any potential impacts and unbalance. Planning permission should be granted subject to appropriate conditions to protect the surrounding environment. I call Michelle McElveen. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. And, and I do share the concerns of Mr Boyle in relation to the manner in which this was announced. And, and regardless of the merits or otherwise of the decision, I suppose the fundamental issue really is here that, that given the scale and the implications of the, of the announcement that it perhaps warranted at the very least a written statement, will the Minister, who has been known to chastise others, um, give a commitment that any future announcement on this scale will be brought to the Assembly in a timely manner? I thank the member for her question, and as I outlined, um, at 12.25, my official telephoned the Infrastructure Committee clerk to advise that a letter on this issue was coming. At 12.45, my private office issued a letter to the Speaker, to the Chair of the Committee, her good self, and to the Business Office for all MLAs. There is a long-established process for doing this. My predecessor, Chris Hazard, took two planning decisions, one to approve a major mixed-use development in Cumber and one to refuse a mixed-use development at Crescent Link in Derry. In both cases, he issued the relevant letters and no announcement was made in the Assembly. This is the same process that was followed in this instance and that has been followed by all of the former ministers. 
And I call Steve Egan. Today, may I thank the Minister for her replies thus far. Um, can she tell the Assembly whether anyone in her department had briefed Sony Airgrids or the Department for Communications, Climate Action and Environment before the Assembly was informed or before any of the MLAs or any of the committees were informed? The answer to that question is no. I call Dolores Kelly. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. And I welcome uh, the Minister uh, coming before the House, but I'm sure she will uh, share my um, sh concern, but not shock, of the double standards emanating from Sinn Féin, a party whose senior figures are under investigation for alleged breaches of this very House's health co uh, COVID regulations. So does she share my concerns? I am the Minister for Infrastructure. Part of my responsibilities is to take decisions on strategic planning applications. As I have outlined in my answer to the original question, processes were correctly followed in this instance. I cannot speak for or be held responsible for the actions of any other Minister in this House. I call Henri Muir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I welcome the planning decision that was made um, on the back of the Executive Committee Functions Bill, which will give the Minister permission to take this decision. Um, can the Minister outline what implications the lack of any devolution for the last three years and the failure to form an executive has had on the ability to take these decisions? I very much share the Member's frustrations um, in this instance. Um, on the issue of applications, on the issues of policies, uh, we could be much further advanced in terms of improving the lives of our citizens if we had have been in doing our job for the three years that we were suspended. There are planning applications of various levels of interest to all parties in this House, and I have no doubt that all would have been at a much greater advanced stage if we had have had a functioning assembly and an executive. I call Claire Bailey. Um, and I thank the Minister for, for being here today. And I'm just wondering, with the environmental impact of this new interconnector and the expense of the construction, as well as the, the recent drop in supply demand by up to 290 megawatts, um, and Sony predicted that will be the case um, until about 2029, is the interconnector still our best option, or could public funds be better spent on greener generation schemes, such as the Camlock hydro pump scheme? I thank the member um, for her question, uh, and there is uh, still a very much a need for this interconnector. It is of huge strategic importance, not just in the area of the security of energy supply, but in terms of enhancing our ability to maximise our potential from renewable energies. In addition to that, it will provide an important boost to the construction um, sector during the construction phase, and subsequently, we should be able to see an increase in employment opportunities within the whole area of renewable energy also. I think that that has been confirmed by the level of support right across all sectors, including the renewable energy sector, following the announcement yesterday. The call Paul Mr. Speaker, can I ask the Minister how often it would be the case that the Department of Infrastructure tweets out planning decisions and links in the applicant to that tweet? And is the Minister assured that given the issues currently ongoing with Sony's governance, which has indeed been investigated by the utility regulator, that the Minister can be assured that she has been provided with all the information, all the relevant information, and that information is accurate from the applicant? I thank the member um, for his question. Um, the member will be aware that I have to give very careful consideration to the planning application that is before me. He will also be aware that this has undergone a rigorous process and was subject to detailed examination um, at the public uh, inquiry. So I do believe that there has been a rigorous process and that all of the statutory processes that are required have been completed. In relation to the departmental tweet, um, that is obviously tweeted out through the press office in my department. I don't suspect that there is any difficulty with that, but I couldn't say if that has always been done, but can provide that information to you. Nicole, Jerry Carl. Uh, can the Minister confirm whether or not it was the Executive Committee Functions Bill that allowed her to announce this decision? And if it was the case, are there any uh, further decisions on the scale to be announced by her department in the coming weeks and months? 
I thank the member um, for his question. Um, the member will be aware that the Executive Committee agreed that a bill be brought forward by Accelerated Passage before the summer recess to address the implications of the Buick judgment. Uh, the bill received royal assent on the 21st of August. Uh, now that royal assent has been received, according to the clear legal advice received by my department, I, as the Minister of the Department, can take planning decisions without referral to the Executive Committee and prior to the updating of the Ministerial Code. In respect of other applications, the member will understand that a number of applications are currently being considered, and for signed decisions to be reached, we have to ensure that all due processes and statutory processes are completed. I call Jocelyn McNulty. Thank the Minister for coming to the House today on this important issue. I'm devastated today, Minister, for SEAT, for local communities, for local campaigners, for local businesses, for local farmers, for local uh, householders. There's going to be a terrible scar across our beautiful countryside in Armagh. I'm pleased today that we're able to meet here with the lights on. If you were listening to the arguments presented by Sony, the lights will be off here today. I believe the interconnector should be underground. Airgrid has recently demonstrated that they are undergrounding the cable in Kildare Meath. Why is this not possible in Armagh and Tyrone? This ugly line of unsightly pylons is going to be unacceptable through our beautiful countryside. We are all too aware of the lack of an un un uh, sorry, a coherent uh, energy strategy that has held up our economy and our government. This plan application is a result of an energy strategy decades old. Has the Minister and our officials considered the impact of this approval on the new energy strategy, which is still, is still to be consulted on? Does she, does she consider that this decision is, is premature? And why has this not been undergrounded? I thank the member for his question, and his passion on this issue is clear. And I know it reflects the passion that's felt by many people uh, in his local community. I can only deal with the planning application that is before me, and this application was for overhead lines. In respect of the energy strategy, the new energy strategy is unlikely to be published until late 2021. Decisions on these planning applications must be taken within the prevailing policy and strategic context. Also, the Department for Economy advised that the need for the second north-south interconnector has not changed, and it is still considered a vital piece of energy infrastructure. The call for evidence document assumes increased interconnection and makes specific reference to the benefits of the new north-south interconnector in terms of security of supply, facilitation of renewables and downward pressure on costs for consumers. This is consistent with previous energy policy. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Notwithstanding the uh, local concerns on this issue, would the Minister confirm that this decision has been widely welcomed by business and industry on both sides of the border, is the most significant piece of strategic all-island infrastructure in generations, and is also uh, an important tool to delivering uh, on our climate change commitments? I do agree um, with the member. Um, this project is of strategic importance at an international, a national and a regional level. And as I have said, it is about improving the security of our energy supply. It's about improving uh, our ability to maximise on renewable energies and reduce our reliance on greenhouse gas, or reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. Um, and it is a strategic uh, all-island project. Uh, and as I said, I recognise concerns locally on this issue. But we could see the reaction yesterday right across the island where people were recognising the strategic importance of this project, the economic importance of this project, and also, as a member rightly points out, its importance in terms of tackling the climate emergency. I call Roy Beggs. Speaker, can the Minister quantify the degree in which this project will assist renewable energy? And also, how can she assure us? that generators in Northern Ireland will be playing on equal playing field when they compete against generators in the Republic of Ireland, where presently their favouritism is being shown towards new generation within the Dublin area. I thank the member um, for his question. Uh, and it has been confirmed that it will maximise our potential to draw down and utilise our renewable energy by building capacity and ensuring the free flow and connectivity of energy. In respect of the other issues that he raises, uh, the job for me as the Minister for Infrastructure is to give very careful and detailed consideration of the planning application. Uh, that is, the planning uh, policy and considerations and other material considerations. He may wish to direct those questions to other parties. And I call Mark Durgan. 
but uh, Kian Corlea, I again fully understand uh, local concerns and objections to this application and indeed heard some of them uh, during my own tenure as Environment Minister. I recognise the difficulty in making major decisions such as this. Uh, we have heard today of the huge benefits that this will bring to businesses and the welcome that it, the approval has received from businesses. Could the Minister outline just what this approval will mean for, for ordinary people? For ordinary people, what it means is that they will have a secure supply of energy uh, for their homes. It means that businesses will have access to a secure supply of energy. We are working against a predicted backdrop of a deficiency in energy supply at 2025. So this is a big strategic uh, project uh, of great importance. Uh, that importance is at a high level, economic level, at an all item level, but it will also have a hugely important impact in people's own homes. And that concludes this item of business, members. Could I ask members just to take a raise for a moment or two? Thank you.